test.
good afternoon, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask all present to please respect the instructions given by our parish ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a social distance of two meters, and wearing face masks at all times within the church. We will not have a collection at the offertory, but you can use the boxes provided at the entrance or exit of the church, or you can donate online at the parish website. Thank you for your continuing support as your donations help us with the operating costs of the Basilica. At the time of Holy Communion, further instructions will be given, and at the end of Mass, we ask that you please follow the usher's instructions for exiting the, from the church. Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch, and our processional hymn is number 389 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. <laughs> Christ is risen today, alleluia, our triumphant holy day, alleluia, who dared once upon Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. At the beginning of this Mass, uh, we ask the Lord to heal us and bring us forgiveness of our sins as we uh, sprinkle everyone with the Easter water that's blessed. to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory Lord God heavenly King Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you alone are the holy. 
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At the temple gate, Peter addressed the people. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One, and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The refrain for the psalm is, Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. Hmm. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. Let the light of your face A reading from the first letter of St. John. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. 
But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now by this, we may be sure that we know him, if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments, is a liar. And in such a person, the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word, truly in this person, the love of God has reached perfection. By this we may be sure that we are in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples told the eleven and their companions what had happened on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus had been made known to them at the breaking of the bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. And he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem, You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, First of all, it's so good to see a a larger number here today. It's it's so wonderful to see people back, and some I haven't seen in a long time. And uh, it's so wonderful our community is coming back together again. Although, you know, we're still together even on live stream and I know it's not the same thing, but it's so wonderful to have everyone returning and back again. And during the Sundays after Easter, we hear stories of the resurrection of Jesus, and today we have St. Luke's version. The story is a little different from the others, uh, but it depends very much on the Gospel of John. Luke is the only writer in the Old and New Testament of our sacred scripture that is not a Jew. He himself was a Gentile, he was a later convert, and he was a disciple of St. Paul and traveled with him. So Luke would hear the stories of St. Paul and write them down. And Jesus speaks to all of his disciples now gathered in the upper room the very day of the resurrection. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus had met Jesus, had spoken with him and didn't recognize him 
until he broke the bread in front of them. And that reminded him of the Eucharistic sacrifice. While they were still speaking about this, Jesus stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. The disciples were in the upper room with the doors locked, out of fear for those who arrested Jesus and ultimately crucified him. And they would, are scared that they would now hunt them down and kill them as well. They were people who had a memory of great hope, and this hope in their minds was destroyed on Good Friday when Jesus, their Lord and their Messiah, was nailed to a cross and crucified. And so for them, there was no hope that the Messiah would create a new way of living, a new world. That was what they expected. They were full of fear and great guilt and personal failure because they had deserted Jesus. They must have felt their relationship with Jesus was over. But Jesus comes among them and says, Peace be with you. And with these words, Jesus brought them forgiveness and reconciliation. This was the gift of the risen Jesus to them. Luke, in this way, lets us know that Jesus seeks us out when we are troubled and, doubt, and when we doubt God's forgiveness and God's presence among us. When we feel that even God has abandoned us, Jesus breaks through the barriers and comes to us. He appears and says, peace be with you. The peace he gives, of course, is not just an absence of war or conflict. It is the shalom of God, a special peace, the shalom of God, a harmony between God and people, a harmony that is so deep that there is an end to war anyway. There is only caring. There is mutual forgiving and sharing. It is only after the disciples came to realize they were forgiven and received that gift of forgiveness from Jesus that they were sent out as messengers, as witnesses of the Lord's mercy and forgiveness to others. Jesus commissioned them to preach repentance for the forgiveness of sins to all nations. Just as Jesus brought the disciples peace, healing, and forgiveness, we are entrusted with that same mission. And that is what we find Peter doing in the first reading today. He declares to the people of Jerusalem that although they handed Jesus over to death to Pilate, God's forgiveness was available to them if they turned to God and believed in Jesus. The risen Jesus proclaims a faithful and forgiving God, not one that condemns. And today's second reading states that if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father who pleads for us, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sins of the world. In the Gospel, the apostles knew, they knew they were forgiven, even though they still doubted. They were in communion with Jesus again and he ate with them. They were again his friends, friends who loved him, who left everything to follow Jesus, who walked with him, who listened to him, who experienced his mercy and his kindness and compassion. They remember he told them to love as he loved and to give as he gave and to lay down their lives down, to lay their lives down as he had laid them down, laid his life down, that they would experience the reality of God's love in their lives. Then they would have a special gift to give others when they went out into the world. So empowered by the Holy Spirit, they were to go out to love one another, to care for one another, to sacrifice for one another, and then they would know that God is with them and they need not be afraid anymore of anything, not even death, for there is no death in God. There is change from life to life. There is new life. There is resurrection. So Luke is telling us all today what it really means to be a Christian. As we reflect on Luke's gospel and his resurrection story, he also reminds us of the significance of the Eucharist. Having shared the meal with his disciples, Jesus opens the scriptures for them, telling them the significance of what was written about him in the scriptures. That's what we do at Mass. So too, our celebration of the Mass is an encounter with Jesus through the Word and the sacrament of the Eucharist. As Jesus commissioned his disciples to be witnesses to what, to what scriptures foretold, through our celebration of the Eucharist, Jesus commissions us and sends us to announce the good news of Jesus' forgiveness of sins, his compassion, his love, and his mercy for the world.
and we profess our faith as we pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And we turn now in prayer to our Heavenly Father, trusting in God's merciful help for us. For courage for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and Peter, our Archbishop, and for all who lead and guide our church during these difficult times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our church, that our celebration of the resurrection of Christ may transform and strengthen our commitment to be a people of hope as we respond to our baptismal call to be the light of Christ for our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hold positions of local, national, and global leadership, that the light of the risen Christ may encourage them in their work of building a more just, loving, and peaceful world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the efforts of our archdiocese in our response to the victims of abuse, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peace of Christ may calm all of our fears and anxieties, and may peace reign in our homes, churches, communities, and in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. During this virus pandemic, for all who are sick, lonely, isolated, or heavenly burdened in our homes, healthcare facilities, and hospitals, and for those who provide compassionate care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died recently, Patricia Martin, Margaret Parsley, Father Wayne Cummings, Mary Jean Smith, and we pray for comfort and consolation for all who mourn the passing of loved ones, that they may rest in the peace of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers in the quiet of your hearts today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the grace and blessings you give us every day. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Sing of one who walks beside us and this day is living still. One who now is closer to us than the thoughts of hearts distill. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And what is the sacrifice at your hands? For our good and the good of all is holy church. Let us pray. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but at this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb when slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loves the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. And therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, with all other bishops, priests, and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. 
Keep us attentive to the needs of all that, sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope. We may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your, pres of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is ended, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming again of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share the peace of Christ now with one another. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under, under my roof, roof but only say, say the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of amen before the distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion, bow towards the host, in silence, receive the host in your hands, step aside to consume the host, 
return to your pew as directed by ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The body of Christ. Amen. took the bread he broke Jesus shared the bread he broke and said to this to this in memory of me Jesus took the wine he poured Jesus shared the wine he poured and said to
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Again, thank you for your presence here today, and we pray that we'll keep these numbers going in the next weeks ahead. We all follow the health care, the protocols and guidelines from the health authorities. They're doing a good job. They're keeping us safe, so we thank God for them as well. For all those in healthcare professions, we thank all of our people here at our Basilica Parish, the ushers, our music people, our readers, our, all the people who help out in so many committees here, to thank them for their continued work it's all during this pandemic. And we'll pray to Our Lady for protection during the pandemic, our last prayer. O Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping our faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger. O glorious and blessed Virgin, amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. And please follow the directions of our ushers as you leave the church. Our missioning hymn is number 557 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Let Heaven Rejoice. And earth be glad, let all creation sing. Let children proclaim through every land, Hosanna to our King. Sound the trumpet into the night, the day of the Lord is near. Wake his people, lift your voice, proclaim it to the world. Let heaven rejoice and earth be glad, let all creation sing. Let children proclaim through every land, Hosanna to our King. Rise in splendor, shake off your sleep, put on your robes of joy. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord. Let heaven rejoice and earth be glad. Let all creation sing. Let children proclaim through every land. Hosanna to Thank you.